Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Sunday, the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Year, uh, July 21st, year of our Lord, 2024. I do pray this finds you well in another beautiful summer day. I do pray that you are able to go out and enjoy uh, the beauty of God's creation in this beautiful weather. Thanks to our hosts of the pool party that the youth group had and their families uh, had this afternoon. It was just a wonderfully fun and refreshing afternoon. They're such gracious hosts. We just really had a marvelous time. And again, uh, I'm out of permission to mention your name. Uh, but again, thank you. Thank you so much for your uh, generosity and opening your home to us. It was just a, a, an absolutely marvelous afternoon, early evening, a lot of fun. The kids had a ball, as did the adults. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Once again, according to the daily lectionary, we turn to the first book of Samuel, chapter 4. And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines. They encamped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. The Philistines drew up in lines against Israel. And when the battle spread, Israel was defeated by the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men on the field of battle. And when the troops came to the camp, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh, that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who was enthroned on the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. As soon as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout so that, the earth resounded, and when the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said, What does this great shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? And when they learned that the ark of the Lord had come to the camp, the Philistines were afraid, for they said, A god has come into the camp. And they said, Woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us! Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods who struck the Egyptians with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage and be men, O Philistines, lest you become slaves to the Hebrews, as they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and they fled, every man to his home. And there was a very great slaughter, for there fell of Israel thirty thousand foot soldiers. And the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. A man of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiloh the same day with his clothes torn and with dirt on his head. When he arrived, Eli was sitting on his seat by the road watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told the news, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the sound of the outcry and said, What is this uproar? The man hurried and came and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were set so he could not see. And the man said to Eli, I am he who has come from the battle. I fled from the battle today. And he said, How did it go, my son? He who brought the news answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has also been a great defeat among the people. Your two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of the God, the ark of God has been captured. As soon as he mentioned the ark of God, Eli fell over backward from his seat by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died, for the man was old and heavy. He had judged Israel forty years. Now his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant, about to give birth. <coughs> Pardon me. And when she heard the news that the ark of God was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and gave birth, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman attending her said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have borne a son. But she did not answer or pay attention. And she named the child Ichabod, saying, 
the glory has departed from Israel, because the ark of God had been captured, and because her father-in-law and her husband and she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. That is the word of the Lord. So this is a continuation of Samuel. Samuel is now receiving the word of the Lord. But in this episode here, one of the things we don't hear is that the, the Israelites, the Hebrews, they did not have an instruction from the Lord to do what they did, especially to use the ark in battle. Now, we, we can run into that in the church today, that we use the gifts that Christ gives us in some other way that um, he didn't intend. Now, maybe some of the more dramatic results are, you know, taking uh, water from the baptismal font and using it to, uh, oh, I don't know, you know, ward off the zombie apocalypse. I, I don't know, you know, to use it to, 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 to use it in some way that God hasn't said. It's for baptism. You know, to use it to uh, ward off evil spirits, or I'm trying to think of some other example, maybe grow magic tomatoes in your garden by sprinkling water on that, or think you're going to defeat your enemies by sprinkling them with that water. And same with the with the Lord the Lord's Supper. We come together as the church, and we eat and drink. We say Christ's words. He tells us and makes the things what they are, his body, his blood, along with the, the bread and the wine. And we don't use it in a way that he didn't, we eat and we drink, it's for us. So we don't take, you know, things and, and uh, bow, you know, parade parade around with them like them some sort of, uh, or carry around like a talisman in our pocket. Uh, uh, and the same thing with the word. We don't treat the word of God as some talisman. Some people will, will put the word of God, you know, like the Bible, I mean, in like a shrine in their house and you can't touch the shrine. It can almost become an idol in that in that way. I mean, have it, they never look at it and actually read the words. Instead of the words, but the Bible is there, some sort of just sort of talisman. None of that is something that God ever tells us to do. You want to know what God would have you do with these gifts, you go to his word where he tells you. You know, we're going to proclaim the word. The word's going to be taught to us by pastors. And we're going to and really digest that word and, and meditate on it and, and allow it to become part of us. And from that word, the word of Christ, comes baptism how we, what baptism is for, what baptism does, and how it's used by the church. And then same thing with the Lord's Supper, absolution, the whole thing. And so uh, we don't treat these things as some sort of talisman. You're bound to fail. You know, if uh, um, uh, you know, something bad is going to happen, some somebody like, and, and so you, let's say somebody's invading your home, God forbid, you know, and you, and you hold this up like, you know, you know be gone, ye. Um, uh, and they don't, you know, they don't go away. Maybe they grab the Bible out of your hands and, and uh, you know, whack you upside the head. Lord, Lord have mercy. Um, don't pray for that for anybody. But you see, we're, we're using the gifts in the wrong ways. These people, they thought that they could just bring the ark where God promises to be. And, and certainly in Scripture, God does tell his people to carry the ark before them, and, and he does amazing things. And they had heard of what God, this, that's kind of a cool thing that they had heard all those years later, they had heard of, what God had done to the Egyptians. And so the Philistines are filled with fear. Yet again, though, the, the Hebrews, the Israelites, had no command from God to do what they did, to take that gift and use it to defeat the Philistines. They didn't inquire. They didn't, they didn't pray. We didn't, they didn't seek God's word. And so they're defeated. And they lose the ark. Now there's maybe another thing we can learn from that. Of course, we see in the context, and it's about to change with Samuel, but we, we've, we learned about the priesthood of um, Eli and his sons. It was despicable. And God says, you know, your, your ministry is going to come to an end. And maybe that's a reflection of what was going on in the ministry throughout Israel of that day. Uh, and I, I would suspect it is. God will, if we abuse his gifts, he takes them away. None then you're in real dire straits because you don't have them. You know, he's taken the, the thing you need, the thing that gives you salvation in life. He takes it from you. Dare we despise his gifts in that way? Not only, you know, misuse them in the church when we pray we don't do that, but you know, to ignore them and just, you know, blow them off and live however you want to do. And I, and I do, and please don't do this. I do, as a pastor, I run into people who want to quote, 
you know, they really have no idea what they're talking about, and they yet they want to throw scripture up at me. And and I, you know, over the years, I've been doing this by God's grace for quite a while now. You know, I'll, I'll often say, do you really want to argue with me about, you know, the Word of God? And and that sounds arrogant, but you know, I've devoted my life to the study of the Word of God. That doesn't mean I know everything. And people often will remind me of, you know, I, I can't recall a fact or something like that, and they'll help me with that. But what it's teaching what its themes are, what the, the books are, how the languages work, just looking at the grammar, the books in relationship to each other. And those I've devoted my, and, and then, you know, how Christ from beginning to end is, is you know, presented to us in scripture. It's, it's the story of him, uh, God's salvation for us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, you know, I, I just tell people, do you really want to go toe to toe with me? And again, not that I know everything, I certainly don't. You know, but it's like they want to quote scripture to get their way. And that, that's, you know, so see what you're doing, sort of the same thing. It's like, well, I got this argument, this battle I want to win. So I'm going to pull out some word of God. I don't know the context. I just know, you know, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Or um, uh, I can do all things through Christ who, that doesn't even say that, through God, through he who strengthens me. And we don't know the context of that. We don't know what, what book that came from and, you know, the, um, and we just, we're going to throw those out there like some sort of mantra or paint it on our shirt so we win the soccer game. You see, it's all the same thing. It's all the same thing. Um, let's not use God's word that way to win arguments or to hold it up as some sort of talisman. Uh, certainly, it's nothing wrong with having God's word displayed in your home. And even on shirts, it's got to be used the right way in a reverent way. It is a holy thing. And the context has to be right. Uh, the translation has to be good. Uh, um, and faithful to the original, uh, either the Hebrew or Aramaic in the Old Testament or Greek in the New Testament. So, um, and if we use Miss God's word, I'll say this again, you know, he takes it away. He, he can't. You know, uh, that doesn't mean he takes it away forever. Um, and I think, you know, I, at the end of this, I think, what, a, what an interesting name. So, Eli's dead, his sons are dead. We hear about uh, the wife of of uh, Phineas, she's about to give birth, and uh, she, uh, um, it seems that this woman who is attending to her dies, um, uh, or, or maybe she dies, it's kind of ambiguous in the text, but, but the baby is named, you know, after hearing all this death and that they've lost the ark of God, Ichabod, for the glory has departed Israel. What a name, Ichabod. Um, uh, because the ark is gone now th it'll come back and we'll pick that up tomorrow but uh uh and then it'll be god's doing not theirs but the lesson for us is christ our lord has given us gifts to be used the way he determines they're to be used they're for us they're a blessing for us and not to be used um in in a way that he doesn't tell us um, and then bad things happen you know when 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 uh we do that. Uh, we, we take our eyes off of Christ. We start focusing on the things themselves as, as I mentioned several times, uh, talismans that ward off the boogeyman or something like that, as opposed to what Christ promises to actually do with the gifts that he gives to us. Um, you know, from his word, baptism, the blessed sacraments, you know, these things. All right, let's uh, close that here and confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father, almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for the joy of the resurrection among us, having received the great gift of Christ this day, forgiveness and the life that is ours, that we may be filled with joy as you send us out into our various vocations. And as you send us out into the world about us amongst our neighbors, we pray that having been nourished by the word and the sacrament this day, that uh, we would bear the fruit of faith in all that we do and everywhere you send us. We ask you to place your hand upon those who are crying out to you for healing, um, and according to your good and gracious will, heal them, keeping them ever, ever mindful of your love. We ask you to bless those who have traveled and give you thanks for this travels of um, those we know and love, for their safe travels. We pray that you bless um, our communities with peace, and bless the political system as it's in such turmoil. Uh, we pray that uh, cool heads would prevail and that your will would be done. All this we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. Bring to your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now we turn to him 878. Abide with me. Abide with me, fast falls the even tide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other helpers fail and comforts flee, help of the helpless, so oh, abide with me. I need thy presence every passing hour. What but thy grace can for the tempter's power, who like thyself my guide and stay can be, through cloud and sunshine, O oh, abide with me. Come not in terrors as the King of kings, but kind and good with healing in thy wings. Tears for all woes, a heart for every plea. Come, friend of sinners, thus abide with me. That's the first three stanzas of six of 878, Abide With Me. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a blessed rest. That God's grace will see you tomorrow night. Good night.